I'm going to work through the 2014 AP Chemistry FRQ, question number two, which is a lot of acid-based stuff. So it says here, propionic acid is a carboxylic acid that reacts with water according to the equation above. At 25 degrees, the pH of a 50 milliliter sample of 0.2 molar uh, propionic acid is 2.79. Okay, so we are given a pH and if we know a pH, we could figure out the H plus concentration. So just keep that in mind that that is a possibility. Identify a Bronsted-Lowry conjugate acid-base pair in the reaction. Clearly label which is the acid and which is the base. Well, this is our propionic acid, so obviously this is our acid. That's our proton donor. And after it donates that H plus, that proton, then it becomes this guy here, which I think is called propionate. Anyway, this is our, our conjugate base. So this would be our acid, and this would be its conjugate base, which is just a base, but it's the base that goes along with that acid. Now we could also do these two. Okay, in this case, this would be our acid, and this would be the base. Base because water gains, you know, accepts an H plus to become H3O plus, or H3O plus donates to become H2O. Now, one problem students had when they wrote this question is they just said acid base, conjugate base, conjugate acid, and they didn't link the two, and so they didn't get points. They had to make sure that there was a link. But it's only asking you to do one conjugate acid base pair, so either the green or the blue would have been fine. Okay, next, determine the value of the Ka for propionic acid at 25 degrees. So what we could do here would be to go ahead and do an ice box. And water is a liquid, so we're not going to worry about its numbers. And what do we know? We know that the original acid solution here is a 0.2 molar solution and we have that pH is 2.79. So we said that we could figure that out. We could figure out that the H plus concentration is equal 10 to the negative pH. Okay, and that's working backwards from the fact that uh, the negative log of the H plus concentration is the pH. And if we do this, we find out that the pH is, I mean that the H plus concentration is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3. All right. So we said the concentrate 0.2 molar. So this here is 0.2 molar. And starting with, these are both 0 molar. But here we know the pH. So we know the pH. This must be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And because every time one of these breaks up, we get one of these and one of these, then this one also must be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And that means we were making this much of each of these, and we we're using up 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So the amount we are going to have here is essentially 0.2. Okay, we could go back and figure it out, but, you know, we're only going to go to two significant figures anyway, so this is fine. Now we take those numbers and put them into our Ka expression, which is the concentration of CH3, CH2, COO minus, times the concentration of H3O plus, all divided by the concentration of the acid, CH2COOH. Now both of these numbers in the numerator here are 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3, so I'm just going to square that, divided by 0 0.20, which comes out to be 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5, and that is a unitless number. If somebody said, well, what is it? It's going to be molarity, molarity over molarity, which is molarity, but uh, on Ka's, we just ignore the units. So this so far on this page, then we had one point back here for doing the uh, listing a conjugate acid-base pair and labeling who is the acid and who is the base. 
and down here this is worth three points and pretty much if you see, if the reader could see this number here and they could see you did some work that would be worth three points but if you didn't get all three points here then if you saw the ka expression or if they saw that you substituted the correct numbers into the ka expression that would be worth a point and back here just figuring out uh, what the H plus concentration was from the pH that was worth a point. So a point for the answer, a point for changing the, a, the pH into the H plus, and a point for showing uh, the expression or substituting into the expression. So far so good. Now for part C, each of the following statements determine whether the statement is true or false. In each case explain the reasoning that supports your answer. For I, okay, what we're going to see here, it says the pH of a solution prepared by mixing 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar uh, propionic acid with 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar NaOH, that the pH is going to be 7. Okay, that is going to be false. Now be sure, you know, when you have a question like this, be sure and state whether it's true or false because some people kind of get into the explanation and forget to actually answer the question. So it is false. What's going to happen here is we have this acid, I'm just going to shorten that up to HA, okay, plus uh, NaOH, and we're going to make water. But what we're going to end up with is our conjugate base, okay, the conjugate base like we had before, that's the propionate ion. And what that's going to do, that's going to affect the water. So you have A minus, you put it with water. Okay, the conjugate base, what happens to it is that it is a pretty good acceptor. It's going to hold on to one of the A, to the H's, the protons, and leave OH's in solution. So that's called hydrolysis. So this guy is a conjugate base, and the fact that it's a base is that it is a proton acceptor and it's going to increase the hydroxide concentration in the solution. So it is definitely not going to be a pH of 7. It's going to be a pH of 8 or 9 or 10, something a little bit higher than 7. So that first statement is definitely false. Okay, second statement here. If the pH of a hydrochloric acid solution is the same as the pH of a propiano propianoic acid solution, then the molar concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution must be less than the molar concentration of the propanoic acid solution. Whew. Okay, we'll go back to think about what we're doing. If we had a strong acid, that means that all of that acid breaks up into H pluses and Cl minuses. Everything breaks up. But if I have a weak acid, again, I'm going to call it HA, then most of that HA is, uh, stays as HA, and then a little bit of it breaks up. So the idea is if we are saying that we have the same amount of H pluses, same pH of a solution, okay, how do we get that? Well, our HA concentration must have been pretty large to make this small amount, or HCl, we only need a little bit of that to get a small amount. So this question here is said it's true that if these two solutions have the same pH, the pro Benoic acids uh, concentration must be greater than the HCl concentration. The last parts of this question says a student is given the task of determining the concentration of a propanoic acid solution of unknown concentration. A 0.173 molar NaOH solution is available to use as the titrant. The student uses a 25 milliliters uh, volumetric pipette to deliver the propanoic acid solution into a clean dry flask. After adding an appropriate indicator to the flask, the student titrates the solution with the 0 0.173 molar NaOH, reaching the endpoint after 20.52 milliliters of the base solution has been added. So calculate the molarity of the propanoic acid solution. So the first thing here, this is a titration, just a simple titration problem. And um, we're going to do it as a, a stoichiometry problem, but a lot of people are going to do this volume times molarity of the acid equals the volume times the molarity of the base. 
and this works in this case because our uh, we have NaOH has one OH, and the acid has one uh, H to give off, so they're both monoprotic. And because of that, this is an okay. This is really the dilution formula, um, but it works for this kind of a titration if it's you know something simple like HCl, NaOH, something with one H. Um, if it doesn't have that, uh, other ones would this would not work. Um, but we're going to go back and do this as a stoichiometry problem. Okay, I've written out the problem. So we're here, we're talking about the uh, 20.52 milliliters of our base, and our base is 0.173 molar. So here we have the uh, volume of the base written as liters. Here we have the molarity of our base, so that converts our liters into uh, moles. That should be moles. And then, uh, because of the problem, we're saying for every one mole of NaOH, we get one mole of acid. So we end up with an answer here, 3.55 times 10 to minus 3 moles of our acid. But we're asking for the molarity of the acid. So molarity is the number of moles of acid divided by the liters. And this is that 25 milliliters that was done with a volumetric pipette, which is very careful. And uh, four significant figures here. So we have 0 0.02500 liters. And when you do that together, we get 0 0.0142 molar. Now, again, if we went back and did it this way, we get the same answer. So answer for part D, 0 0.0142 molar. Okay, this is worth two points. And again, if I were the reader, if I saw that answer, I'd give you the two points. But if you don't get this answer correctly, if you at least got to this answer, okay, if we could see that answer, you could at least get one of the two points. Now the second part, the student is asked to redesign the experiment to determine the concentration of a butanoic acid solution, so 4-carbon, um, instead of the propanoic acid solution. For the butanoic acid, the pKa is 4.83. The student claims that a different indicator will be required to determine the equivalence point of the titration accurately based on your response to part B. Do you agree with the student's claim? Justify your answer. So what we're saying here is if we have the butanoic acid, okay, it has a pKa of 4.83. Okay, but we also had before, we had the propanoic acid. And if you recall back, we decided that its Ka was equal to 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. So here we have a pKa, here we have a Ka, so we're going to have to be able to compare them. So one thing we could do would be to change our pKa into Ka, take you know 10 to the negative pKa, or take the negative log of the uh, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. If I do that, my pKa for the propionic acid is 4.89. And the idea there that those are pretty close, 4.89, 4.83, you know, that's not significantly different. So the indicator is going to be fine. Okay, so the question is, um, student asked it at a, okay, do you agree with their claim? No, we should not agree. because the pKa's are similar, or we could have figured out the Ka and compared the Ka's, they'd be similar, meaning that the in same indicator would be fine for both uh, titrations. And that is the entire question. By the way, this part here is worth two points as well. Okay, one point is for not agreeing, okay, and indicating um, that the uh, pKa's or the Ka's are going to be similar. And the second part is for actually doing this calculation. So for going and figuring out uh, the pKa of both or the Ka of both, uh, that's the second point. That's the problem.